Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance, and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, O gracious God. Let me turn the page. Forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. God of love, giver of life, you know our frailties and failings. Give us your grace to overcome them. Keep us from those things that harm us and guide us in the way of salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Again, I want to welcome you to this service. We are glad that you're here, whether you're joining us over Facebook or YouTube or our website or the radio. We are glad that you are here and know that we keep you in our thoughts and prayers in these days, in these uncertain days, in these days that have caused some no amount, no little amount of fear and concern. So we keep one another in our prayers in these days. Hey, good morning. Happy Sunday. I am actually coming to you pre-recorded. I'm not in the sanctuary or in the Family Life Center. I am here downstairs in the Sunday School Room. This is where I actually did a lot of the summer messages that I did. Um, so I'm coming to you today from the Sunday School area downstairs. And today, when you are listening to the readings, I want you to listen, obviously, to all the readings, but in particular, the Philippians reading, Philippians 4, verse 4, 
Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. And there's another part of this verse also um, in verse 7. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And that is my favorite Bible verse. I love that Bible verse because there's always been something very comforting about the idea of the peace that passes all understanding. It means I don't have to fully understand it. I don't have to know everything. I don't have to understand what God's plan is all the time. There is, there is something about faith and about God that just passes all understanding. And that gives me great comfort and great joy. Um, so back to that joy, rejoicing. I have not done a song for a while. So for the children's message today, I'm going to do a quick song with you that goes right along with this Bible verse. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. It's a very repetitive song. It's a simple song. So I think you'll be able to catch on and sing along. So feel free right at home in your living room or wherever you're watching the service. Please sing along. So we start with rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice. Again, I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, again I say rejoice. And you know, the thing about rejoicing, the thing about joy, is that it's contagious. And that's a good contagious. So be joyful, rejoice in the Lord, and let that spread. Have a great day. Bye-bye. The first reading for the 19th Sunday after Pentecost is taken from Isaiah chapter 25, verses 1 through 9. O Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name, for you have done wonderful things, plans formed of old, faithful, and sure. For you have made the city a heap, the fortified city a ruin. The palace of aliens is a city no more. It will never be rebuilt. Therefore, strong peoples will glorify you. Cities of ruthless nations will fear you. For you have been a refuge to the poor, a refuge to the needy in their distress, a shelter from the rainstorm, and a shade from the heat. When the blast of the ruthless was like a winter rainstorm, the noise of aliens like heat in a dry place, you subdued the heat with the shade of clouds. The song of the ruthless was stilled. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wine stained clear. And he will destroy on the mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations, he will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all that from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Here ends the first lesson. The psalm for today is Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Here ends the psalm.
The second lesson for this Sunday is found in Philippians chapter 4, verses 1 through 9. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. I urge Euodia and I urge Sintichi to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you also, my, lo my loyal companion, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel, together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guide your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. Here ends the reading. A reading of the Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 22nd chapter, the first 14 verses. Once more, Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. And again, he sent others, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his slaves, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, The wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go, therefore, into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came, to see, came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendant, Bind him hand and foot, and throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord.
Brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. This story from Matthew's Gospel is a little more than just troubling. Jesus compares the kingdom of heaven to a place where people are murdered, to a place where they are bound hand and foot and thrown out, all on the basis of what they wear or what they do not wear. It is, in fact, the, um, the very image that most people have when they think about God, that God loves you unless you've done something wrong and then you're toast. But what if, what if that reading of the story from the Gospel of Matthew isn't exactly what the kingdom of heaven is like? What if the kingdom of heaven, if in this reading we would emphasize more the fact that Jesus sends people out to invite others in, everybody, no matter who they are, Jesus invites people in around his grace, around his love, around his forgiveness. Jesus throws away any preconception of who can come to the table to celebrate. Still, you can't get around this whole image, can you, um, of the one who was not wearing a wedding banquet. And often fear then ensues. Well, am I wearing a wedding banquet? What happens if I'm not wearing the right thing when I die? Well, will God uh, throw me out into the outer darkness where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth? Am I, will I be left on the outside looking in? Will I be left to hell itself? I don't know about you. But this fear and anxiety that this story raises can sound a little bit like the fear and anxiety of what's going on in the community. I don't mean the fear and anxiety of, uh, about a pandemic. I mean fear and anxiety that has caused people to be really quite awful to one another from time to time. Maybe you as well, because they are so hyped up, they are so worried, they are so concerned, but they don't want to show it. And so instead, they'll do things like call names or steal signs out of a yard, or they will, um, they will go on Facebook and say things that are just not true. Even in Mora, even in Mora, I know that signs have been stolen out of yards in this community. I know because I am on Facebook from time to time that people are calling other people names. There's just all kinds of nastiness going on. People are trying to avoid that at all costs. And then we come to this gospel lesson and there is nasty, or it feels like there is nastiness going on. What is God up to anyway? In the second lesson, we, we read uh, Paul's final words to the church at Philippi. Now, it should be said that Paul is writing out of a place of deep faith and also deep concern. The deep concern has to do with the fact that he writes this from prison. And really, maybe the concern is more on the part of those who are reading the letter or hearing the letter read than uh, Paul himself. For Paul knows the truth about who Jesus is. He knows the truth about Jesus' love. He knows the truth about the forgiveness of Jesus and the acceptance of Jesus and the healing of Jesus. He knows these things right well. You'll remember the story about how he uh, was Saul, and then on the road to Damascus was met by Jesus, and he was blinded, and he was given a new name. He was named Paul. 
which means, as you'll recall, either dependent on God, or Paul can also mean short in stature. Uh, I was named for the first reason, dependent on God. The fact that I'm short is just a bonus. Paul ends his letter by saying this, And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. He says this because he recognizes, he realizes that people are worried, they are concerned, they are full of anxiety and doubt, and they, he knows that when people, even faith-filled people, when people are at their limit, the edges wear off and people get a little nasty from time to time. So Paul speaks a word of peace, a peace that comes because Jesus Christ, Jesus himself, has died and been raised from the dead for us. The power of sin and death and the devil has been destroyed and we are set free. We are set free from those things, free from those things. We are set free. And because we are set free, we have peace. It doesn't mean things won't be difficult or scary. A whole lot of people are looking into the future and are worried about what that's going to look like, whether it's at church or at school or in the community or in their homes. I know there are grandparents who haven't seen their grandkids during this whole time of pandemic and they're worried, they're concerned. I haven't seen my grandma for quite some time, my 100-year-old grandma, um, who's in the nursing home, not where I can touch her hand, not where her shaky hand can put it up to my face and do this, like, grandma, like grandmas do, right? All kinds of fear going on for the Philippians, and all kinds of fear for the people who heard this parable from Jesus. all kinds of fear maybe for you and me. So what are we to make of this story that Jesus tells us? Should we worry about our place at the table? Should we worry that we're not good enough, smart enough? Should we worry that we've done bad things? Should we worry that that God has a limit to what he will accept. Any limit that was imposed on people died on the cross. Any limit that was imposed on us by God was destroyed on the cross. You don't know this. So let me tell you, when you were baptized, a garment was put on you. You were declared called and chosen by a God whose love is so gracious and free, there's nothing we can do about it but sit at the table and receive what God has to give us. God invites us to the table because you and I are children of God. So come, come to the table. Bring your fear and your brokenness and your, and your pain. Come and bring your doubts. Come and bring all that you are. Bring it to the table and sit down and know that Jesus Christ will feed you with his very body and blood given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. And in that meal, in that eating and drinking, there is peace. And now may the peace of God, 
which passes all understanding. Keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Together let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven and was seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, enter into the nastiness, enter into the brokenness, enter into the fear and anxiety that that has been taken over our world. Enter in, O oh God, and dress us with your garment of love and forgiveness, your garment of mercy and peace. Dress us, O oh God, with your grace. And feed us. Feed us who are hungry for connection, who are hungry for love and for forgiveness, feed us yourself, that we may again give thanks to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. God, as the numbers rise around COVID, as the numbers rise and hospital beds are full and ventilators are few, we ask your healing upon those who are sick. We ask your peace and strength be upon those family members and friends who walk alongside those who are sick. We ask your wisdom and your compassion be at work through doctors and nurses who will treat these who are sick. Be with scientists who are developing vaccines and be with us that we may rest in the promise of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, in Scripture we learn that we can cast all our cares on you because you care for us. And so, God, we come before you lifting up names of people who you know and love, lifting up names of people who need your healing and your strength and your comfort and your peace. Especially this day, we pray for Larry, Patty, Julie, Vern, Alex, Alec, Laird, Anne, Darlene, Vonnie, Pearl, Dave, and Shirley. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, O God, that by your mercy you have set for us care in ways that we can't even begin to fathom. And so we give thanks to you for those who serve our country through the military, especially Chris and Benjamin and all other active members. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we come to the table today, O oh God, help us to know that we are welcome. Help us to invite others as well to receive what you have to give. We thank you that you are one who does not tire of giving. You are one who gives and gives and gives. So give to us so that we may give to others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All of these things and whatever else we should ask, we pray trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We're now going to celebrate Holy Communion, and so I invite you to get your um, your communion elements together, and also to sanitize. So that your hands are not 
giving you something you don't want to have. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. Giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup. Giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and drink all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Now may the body and blood of our crucified and risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which you have just received, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Now until life everlasting, peace be with you. Amen. There's one more prayer that I want to pray. So at the end of the month, on, after October 31st, I'll no longer be serving in grace as pastor. I've taken another call at, to be an interim pastor in southwestern Minnesota. And so the prayer that I want to pray right now is for the people of Grace Lutheran as they um, as they face another transition. So I'll just pray. Good and gracious God, for the people of Grace Lutheran, the mission and ministry of Grace Lutheran, for the future of Grace Lutheran, we raise these things to you. And we ask your presence and your mercy upon them. Dear God, in this time of interim, help the congregation to look deeply at themselves and deeply at you. Help them to listen intently on your leading and guiding. Be with them as they deal with issues that need to be addressed. Walk alongside of them in moments where they feel alone and uncertain. Help them to know your love encircles them and your grace attends them. Be with them, God. We thank you that you have them and have us all in your hands of grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will go as spiritual disciples of Jesus Christ, committed to change the world by God's grace through worship, education, mission, and ministry. It's time now to sing.